Hey there everyone, and how are you guys doing today? Welcome to, yet again, another video here on Mobile Cup of Joe. So it has been a long time coming, the unboxing went up about a month ago now, so it has been quite a while, and I want to get this up sooner than now, but it's finally here, I have got my full review of the OnePlus One. So I don't think this phone really needs any introduction if you've been following the mobile phone market at all. You probably know about this phone. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's see if the 2014 flagship killer really deserves its name. But before we go any further, please go ahead and grab that coffee cup, fill it up, bring it over, and sit on down. Take a swig from your mobile cup of Joe. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started with my full review for the OnePlus One by talking about some design and build quality aspects for the device. Uh, to kick that off, let's go ahead and look at the front where we do have our 5.5 inch 1080p display. Going up to the top left, we've got our 5 megapixel front facing camera, LED notification light, and our ambient light sensor. Now in the, ce in the center of the top of the phone, we do have our speaker grill for sending and receiving phone calls. Now what's nice about this and is something that OnePlus really pushed in the keynote announcement for the device is that it is flush with the overall body of the phone. And why this is a big deal is that most speakers on phones are either embossed or raised from that position. So you get a lot of dust and other unwanted particles inside that speaker. Well since this is flush, I've noticed that no dust whatsoever has gotten in there. It stayed perfectly clean. I don't have to worry about cleaning that sucker out so it doesn't affect the quality of my phone calls. And it's a very small detail in the design of the phone overall as a whole, but it really is nice that OnePlus paid attention to such a small aspect for the phone and did make the adjustment like they did with it. Also interesting on the front of the device is with the screen. Now it's still a normal 1080p display, it's not 3D or anything crazy like that, but if you look on the bottom the top of it, you can see that the screen is actually raised or recessed from the body as a whole. This means that the screen is not flush with the rest of the design, so you can kind of see there is the body of the phone and then it cuts off and then the screen is kind of raised up on top of it. Now this is because if you do drop your phone on the corner, like a lot of phone drops do uh, occur, this will mean that only the body and the frame of the phone will take the impact, and since the screen is not flush with the body, the screen will not be in any harm's way for cracks or scratches or anything of the matter. Now this will not completely protect your phone without you having to get a case in the future. If you drop it smack down on the front, of course it's going to get cracked and possibly cracked at least. But this does give you a nice added layer of protection and really does look very nice in general. It is a little awkward to look at maybe the first day you use it, but after that first day you really don't notice it at all and you really do appreciate those small design changes and adjustments with both the speaker grill and the screen after using it for a little bit. Now if we go onto the right hand side we do have our power slash lock button which is positioned very nicely so it's very easy to access and to reach although this is a very large device. Now going onto the left hand side we do have our volume rocker and our micro sim card slot just above that. Going up top we have our 3.5 millimeter headset jack with a microphone pinhole to the right of that and going onto the bottom we have our micro USB port and other microphone pinhole and dual mono speakers. Now these are mono speakers, they're not stereo, so you're not going to get the richness and the fullness quality like you would on something such as HTC's boom sound on the HTC One, but both of these speakers do work. We see this dual speaker design a lot of the times on devices such as the Nexus 5 and the iPhone 5S or 5 or whatever you want to call it, whatever model, but in those cases there is a dual speaker design although only one of those speakers normally works. With the OnePlus One though, both of these speakers are functional, and again, it's not as rich as you may want it to be, but it is very loud and is actually not the worst speaker we've ever heard on a smartphone. Now, going on to the back of the OnePlus One, we do see that 13 megapixel rear facing camera with a dual LED flash and a noise cancelling microphone to the right of that. Below that, we have our OnePlus logo as well. And if you look at the back of the phone, you will see that it kind of looks textured. 
Well, that's because it is, and the only version of the OnePlus One you can currently purchase is the 64GB Sandstone Black model. And the sandstone material that OnePlus used on this version of the One essentially feels like a combination of rough sandpaper with a very fabric-y velvet. And I know that's kind of a weird explanation uh, to make because you really don't think of rocks and sandpaper with a fabric and a velvet. But that's really what it feels like because it's a great combination between a rough feeling and a very soft texture. Uh, when you just kind of rub your hand over the phone, you notice that it feels incredibly soft again, almost like a fabric, but it does have a rough texture to it. It's very grippy in your hand and is without a doubt the most unique texture I've ever felt on a smartphone. And on top of that, and to add to it, it's actually my favorite texture I've ever felt on a smartphone. For me personally, it tops the aluminum metal used on the HTC One, and without a doubt, is much better than that cheap plastic, perforated, grippy, slimy, hyperglazed plastic, rubbery plastic we see on all of Samsung's products. So. Big props and big, big pros to OnePlus for really making an incredibly unique texture here on the back of the phone. And really props to OnePlus in general for making probably one of my favorite designs for a smartphone of 2014. It's very thin, has good substance to it, has very nice design elements and adjustments you really wouldn't think of making on a smartphone, and it just feels incredibly practical and looks downright sexy at the same time. Now in regards to the screen on OnePlus One, we do have a 5.5 inch display with a resolution coming in a 1920 by 1080 p Full HD. On the display, your colors are very nice and contrast levels are really accurate and very bright and colorful. Whites are nice and stark, your blacks are incredibly deep and your text is nice and crisp. All in all, the display looks really great, outdoor visibility is pretty good, viewing angles are fantastic. Uh, the only thing I can really comment on for the display as a whole is that it is not Quad HD or 2K like we first saw introduced on the LG G3 and other smartphones that are starting to trickle out later towards the end of 2014 and early 2015. For me personally though, I am glad it's not a 2K panel. I am perfectly content with 1080p Full HD and I'm still not convinced with the whole 2K fad that's currently going on. So if you have liked 1080p displays in the past, you're going to love the one here on the OnePlus One. Again, colors are accurate, text is crisp, blacks are deep, whites are stark, and that's about all you can ask for anymore for a smartphone display. The OnePlus One has some of the best processing internals you're going to find on any smartphone currently available on the market. You've got a 2.5GHz quad-core Snapdragon 801 processor, the Adreno 330 GPU, and 3GB of RAM. So I know 3 gigs of RAM does sound kind of overkill, we've seen that in a few smartphones, not a lot. And you can make the argument that you do not need 3 gigs, that 2 gigs is perfectly fine for now. But I will say, there is a slight difference in performance overall with multitasking and just general playing games and applications. You can notice the added speed and performance of 3 gigs. Now the Snapdragon 801 processor is an absolute beast when it comes to playing games, streaming HD video, and really doing anything on the phone. You use the OnePlus One and you notice right away, or at least the first thing I notice, is that the phone absolutely screams with power. Opening applications is instantly fast, changing your themes is a breeze, playing even really graphically intense games, probably some of the most graphically intense games on the phone, proves to be no challenge for it whatsoever. Multitasking, not a problem. All in all, this is probably one of the fastest, if not the fastest, smartphone I have used to date. And that is saying something, especially for a startup company. Yes, you do have high-end internals on here, but also with the software it's running, which we'll get into a bit later, that combination of the custom software and these crazy processing internals make for, once again, an incredibly speedy device and probably one of the fastest you can currently find on the market. So now we're going to be moving on to the factor of the phone that in quote-unquote budget phones tends to take a hit most of the time, and that is with the camera. As I mentioned in the beginning of this review, on the front you do have a 5 megapixel shooter, and on the back of the phone you have a 13 megapixel camera with a dual LED flash. Now, it is my great pleasure to announce that I am extremely happy with the overall performance of both cameras on the OnePlus One. The first one I want to talk about is actually the front-facing camera. Um, I am normally never use front-facing cameras at all, I'm not someone who takes a lot of selfies, there's the occasional one, but I'm not doing it every day, and I just generally don't have that big of a purpose or big of a use for a front-facing camera. 
However, I did find myself using it much more often here on the OnePlus One. I used it a lot to take pictures with family and friends in bigger groups because you have a wide angle lens on here, meaning that you can fit much, much more people in a single shot with the front facing camera than you can on normal smartphone front facing shooters. Now to talk about the camera that most of you care about is the rear facing one or the main camera. Again 13 megapixels dual LED flash and I'm going to go ahead and get the bad news out of the way first. This is not a phone you're going to want to be taking in situations where there is not a lot of natural lighting. Low light performance for the phone although there is dual LED flash is not that great. Pictures are okay and they're better than a lot of smartphone cameras I've seen in the past but there's still a lot of digital noise present and is just not great for shooting in very dark situations. With that said, if you're in an area where there's a lot of natural light or at least some natural lighting, the images you take with the OnePlus One look beautiful. Detail is so fine and so crisp, the colors are very bright and beautiful and very accurate, and all in all the images just look gorgeous. I was looking through my gallery when I was getting ready to work on the review for this phone and I was again reminded just how great of a camera this really is. I went to the University of Michigan campus, uh, helped my cousin move into his dorm when I was uh, over the summer before I went back to school, and I had the OnePlus One with me, and I took a ton of pictures while I was there. And I was looking through those again, and it's just so impressive, all the images this thing is able to capture, and it's really a phone you want to take with you on vacations or trips to really capture those moments. Now going into the video part of the camera, it is 13 megapixel lens, but with the video, of course, you do have the option to record 720p, 1080p, but what's nice for all of you big 4K buffs out there, you also have the option to record in 4K UHD or 4K DCI. I didn't mess around with these a whole lot just because I have no need for 4K at the moment. I don't have a monitor or a TV or any type of display that can really represent that 4K quality, but I can say the 1080p video looks beautiful, autofocus is very fast, a really nice camera for taking videos with. Also fun fact, Tony McAfee, you might have seen some of his videos on the channel so far covering the blue products, the blue smartphones. He actually records all of his videos with the rear facing camera on the OnePlus One, records them in 1080p, so you can watch those and kind of get a good representation for how the video quality really is. It's beautiful video and is a really nice shooter for both still images and a moving video. What's also cool is that if you go to the 720p video option, you can record in both 60 frames per second slow motion and 120 frames per second slow motion. I had a ton of fun with this when I was at my cousin's house over the summer again. We had a huge, a huge nerf war with nerf guns, nerf swords. It was a blast and uh, the, having the slow motion here on the OnePlus One, having the option to record in 120 frames per second was a blast to watch afterwards. Uh, seeing the nerf bullets flying crazy slow motion is just so cool. And there are so many use case scenarios where I can see myself and where I have used the slow motion option on the OnePlus One for the video. Now in regards to the actual software for the camera on the OnePlus One, I really do like it. You open it up and it is CyanogenMod's custom camera application and it really reminiscent of that of the Nexus or camera app for the Google camera was released. On the right hand side you can see it's very simple, just three circles, one for video, one for still images, and one for panorama shots. You have some additional settings below to swap back and forth between your front facing or your rear firing camera, some flash controls, some filter effects, exposure settings, geotagging, and timer settings, and then another button to go into your full settings. But what's really awesome about this software is that if you just swipe up and down, you can cycle through all of your shooting options. So you can cycle between beauty mode, a smart scene, clear image, HDR, uh, aqua, sepia, monotone, all of those great, uh, all your shooting modes on here, you can just cycle through them with a simple swipe either up or down. It's a very intuitive design and is so easy to use and is a fantastic software experience for taking those great pictures. So all in all, again, you might have been kind of wary about it at first, but rest assured, the camera shooting experience in both hardware and software is a win on the OnePlus One. At the end of the day, the OnePlus One is still a smartphone, and the smartphone's bread and butter is still the ability to send and receive phone calls. And in these regards, the OnePlus One actually performs quite nicely. When the phone initially launched when pre-release units were being sent out to reviewers, there were some complaints that the actual speaker was way too dim and way too quiet for phone calls. 
However, since those complaints were made, there have been numerous over-the-year updates to fix this issue, and over the course of the month that I have had the phone, I have faced no such is issues with the speaker. I have Consumer Cellular, the service running on the phone which uses AT&T's towers. In regards to the actual call quality, I have had no issues whatsoever over this past month. Everyone I've talked to sounds fantastic, I've been getting positive feedback for how I sound on the phone calls, and that's really the tried and true part of any smartphone. So when you have good call quality, that makes everything a whole lot nicer. So for the battery life of the OnePlus One, you do have a 3100 milliamp hour unit in there, although I do need to point out it is non-removable. So if you are one of those people that absolutely needs to have a removable battery for the phone, you do want to keep that in mind for the OnePlus One. With that said, I have absolutely loved the battery performance here on the One. For me personally, I'm not getting as crazy of good battery life as a lot of people out there that are putting custom ROMs and kernels on the phone, as I'm using just a stock custom software that comes preloaded for the device. So for me personally, I've been able to get about 18 hours, 18 to 20 hours of total usage time, which equals out to easily two days of use for me. In terms of screen on time, I've gotten anywhere between three hours to three and a half hours, sometimes four if I use the phone just right. Oh, but keep in mind, this is always usually with a constant Bluetooth connection to my Samsung Gear Live, the and an Android Wear powered device. I'm sure if I turned that off for a day, I would be getting even better battery performance. But for me, two days of solid use, keeping it on all night as my alarm clock with airplane mode enabled is absolutely phenomenal. Now again, you do get better battery performance if you put a custom kernel or custom ROM on there. I haven't gotten around to doing that just yet, but for me personally, I've been absolutely thrilled with the battery here on the One. I'm coming from the original Moto X, which if you've owned the phone, you know the battery life is not that great for it. So being able to get two days of use once again out of the OnePlus One is a joy for me. And for all of you quote unquote road warriors out there, it should be a great device for you as well. Now to move on to probably the biggest overall aspect for the OnePlus One is the software it's running. Out of the box, you have a custom build of Cyanogen Mod 11 titled Cyanogen Mod 11S. For those of you that do not know, Cyanogen Mod Org, as commonly referred to as CM, is a custom build of Android, so it is technically a ROM which is essentially a custom operating system. It's still Android, it's still based off of Android, but there are additional features and tweaks that the developers have added to add more functionality and customization to the operating system as a whole, which is based off of Android version 4.4.4. When you hop into the settings for the OnePlus One, you really do notice that this is not your standard affair of a Android operating system. There is a custom personalization tab in your settings. Probably one of the biggest additions with CM11S is the brand new theme engine in the theme showcase. So with a new theme engine, you can essentially change and customize every teeny little bit of your OnePlus One software. This includes any, everything between the styles, icons, fonts, wallpapers, lock screen wallpapers, custom boot animation sound packs, you name it. If there's something you want to change on your OnePlus One, say that you want the overall look of a Samsung's Galaxy S5's TouchWiz user interface with the LG G3's custom software icons for your applications, but you also want the boot animation for Android L, you can have that here on the OnePlus One. And it's extremely easy to change, you can either download themes from the Google Play Store or go right to Mod's custom theme showcase application, browse through them there, download them, and implement them to your OnePlus One. Another big thing with the software for the OnePlus One is the fact that you can change between on-screen navigation buttons and capacitive ones on the bottom frame and the bottom bezel for the device. You can do this as easily as just by going to your settings, hopping into buttons under device, and enabling on-screen navbar or disabling it. This is the first time you've ever been able to change between on-screen buttons or uh, capacitive buttons, and for a lot of people out there, that's a big deciding factor of an Android smartphone if they're capacitive buttons or if they're on screen. So being able to change them and hop back and forth between either one at any given time is huge on the OnePlus One. Now you also have some addition, additional software features um, for your lock screen. You can add button actions, you can customize a camera widget, your clock widget. If you go to your status bar themes, you can choose if you want to hide the clock on there. You can of course customize your battery status style, so if you want to circle 
or your icon of a portrait or landscape, you can change that. You can change what the, si the signal status looks like, so you have an icon or a detailed text for what your current service provider signal is like. You have a ton of options here on the OnePlus One. You also have a list of gestures you can use, such as drawing a circle to activate the camera. Or you can draw two fingers, two fingers vertically to play or pause the current song playing on the device, or draw a left arrow for your previous track, draw a right arrow for your next track, or draw a V to toggle your flashlight. As you can see, I'm just scratching the surface of what's capable with CyanogenMod 11S here on the OnePlus One. There is so much you can do with it. It is such an extensive operating system. And again, with that preloaded on the OnePlus One, it's really opening the doors to so many people into CyanogenMod for who is going to be able to access their custom software now. And what's great about CM11, or CyanogenMod as a whole, is that it's as simple as you want to make it or as extensive and confusing as you want to make it. You have full control of it, the operating system, and after using this for a month now, it's going to be so hard for me to go back to a phone that's not running CyanogenMod. Now to wrap up my review for the OnePlus One. So the biggest kind of controversial topic for the OnePlus One is actually regarding the purchasing of the phone. Right now, you have to have an invitation to buy the OnePlus One, and you can only get the 64 gigabyte 349 black model. Now, I was able to get an invite, obviously, and get the phone, so I am thrilled with it. But for those people out there that still don't have an invite, I do see where the frustration is coming from because I was one of those people I was ready to give up on OnePlus One as a company but then I did get the invite I thought you know what I'm gonna buy the phone and I loved it so much and it's really been one of my favorite smartphones I've ever had the pleasure of owning or using in my life. So OnePlus has said that you will be able to pre-order and order the phone normally like any other smartphone company starting sometime in October but at the time of recording this video on September 11th 2014 you do still need an invite to buy the phone. And if you do get an invite, I would say it's worth it. If you're waiting for one, you think you're going to get an invite soon, just wait it out a little longer. OnePlus is doing a fantastic job with the invites at this point in time. So I'd say, you know what, it's worth waiting for this phone because starting at 299 for 16 gigs or 349 for 64 gigabytes of internal storage completely unlocked when you're paying really half the price of an iPhone or virtually any other flagship Android smartphone it really becomes hard to justify the purchase of something like an LG G3, a Samsung Galaxy S5, an iPhone 6, or really any other flagship smartphone, because if you're getting the same quality product, really even higher quality product in many regards than those flagship phones for half of the price, you really see why the OnePlus One gets the title of the 2014 flagship killer, because I've had this phone for a little over a month now, and I still love it as much as I did on day one. It's been worth the wait. I was on the forums on OnePlus One since early April, and I have just love the phone to death. Again, if you have the chance to purchase the OnePlus One, do it. You will not regret it. And yeah, that's my review of the OnePlus One. I really can't say anything more about it because I've said all the good things I can because the OnePlus One really only has good things to say. Yes, there are tiny things here and there that could be improved. The battery life could be a teensy bit longer if you wanted to complain. You don't have any expandable storage. The battery isn't removable. But those are very minute complaints and really minuscule because in the whole concept of things and the whole image, the OnePlus One is pretty much as perfect to a smartphone as I have ever used. So guys, there you go. That's my full review of the OnePlus One. If you have the phone, if you're trying to get the phone, let me know down in the comments below because again, I love the crap out of this thing and I look forward to hopefully many, many months or maybe a couple years depending on how long I can wait before I get the next big thing. Um, I love this phone. I can't wait to have more time with it. And that's my full review of the 2014 flagship killer, the OnePlus One. So guys, if you liked this video, please go ahead and click that like button if you did like it. And if you super duper loved what you saw, I'd really appreciate it if you'd go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you want to stay in touch some more, go ahead and follow me on Twitter where I'm at MobileCupJoe. And that's all the time I have for this video today. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.